It's empowering, strong, fierce, sexy, iconic. The wings. Successful, confident women. Really powerful young women. Tyra Banks, Heidi Klum, Giselle Bunchen, Adriana, Kelly McChristensen, Alessandra, and all those girls who have something to say. I want to be like that. Here she comes, here she comes, here she comes. It's difficult being a woman. Hi guys, welcome back to the Rear View Report. And today we're going to do a case study on one of my favorite companies, Victoria's Secret. I'm here in celebration of them. Some days, everybody knows Victoria's Secret as the brand that is synonymous with sexy runway shows and racy lingerie and had a powerful role in defining what sexy was in the modern day and at one point was the largest lingerie retailer in the U.S. holding 62% market share. But after achieving explosive success in the 1990s and 2000s, the brand has struggled in more recent years and had been accused of losing relevance. So how did the company grow from having 62% of the market share to possibly filing for bankruptcy? Let's find out. Ladies, let's do it! We should go forward. We should push the boundary. Defend who you are as a person. Be sexy for ourselves and for who we want to be, not because a man says you have to be. It was never about that in the first place. Victoria's Secret was founded in 1977 by American businessman War Raymond. After an uncomfortable trip to a department store to buy underwear for his wife, Raymond set out to create a place where men would feel comfortable shopping for lingerie. He wanted to create a woman's underwear shop that was targeted at men. He went on to open a handful of Victoria's Secret stores and launch its famous catalog. By 1982, the company was making more than $4 million in annual sales, but according to reports, it was nearing bankruptcy at the time. In stepped Lex Wexner. Wexner was the founder of L Brands and was making a name for himself in the retail world as he gradually built up his empire. Wexner diverted Raymond's vision, creating a store that was focused on women rather than men. He was closely following the European lingerie market at the time and wanted to bring this aesthetic to the U.S. So he set up to create a more affordable version of the European upscale brand La Perla lingerie that looked luxurious and expensive but was affordable. And it worked. By the early 1990s, Victoria's Secret had become the largest re lingerie retailer in the U.S. with 350 stores nationally and sales topping $1 billion. The brand began to submit its image over the next few years. In 1995, it would change the game forever by launching the fashion show. The show, which was run by Ed Razek, longtime chief marketing officer of all brands, became an iconic part of the brand's image. Razik and his team are responsible for handpicking the models to walk the show. Because of this, he became one of the most important people in the modeling world, helping launch the careers of Giselle Bündchen, Tyra Banks, and Heidi, and featuring some of the greats like Adriana Lima and Naomi Campbell. In 1999, the show aired for the first time online. This was described as the internet-breaking moment of the era after 1.5 million viewers tried to tune in and crash the site. At the same time, the brand was also launching some of its best known and most successful products, including the heavily padded Miracle Raw and Body by Victoria. The brand was about to make another great innovation that would change the company's culture. Around this time in 1997, the idea... In inversely, Victoria's Secret was facing a scandal with their perfect body campaign, featuring the same very thin, tall, and conventionally attractive models that they've been using. And during this cultural shift, this sparked widespread backlash online and inspired the hashtag I am perfect on Twitter. That Victoria's Secret angels were going to be the face and heart of the brand itself. From then on, the, the term angel became synonymous with the brand. 
the best photographers and television directors in the world to make commercials for the brands. The runway shows became more and more lavish. In 2000, model Giselle Bündchen walked the runway in what was then the most expensive item of lingerie ever created, a $15 million diamond and ruby encrusted fantasy bra. In 2000, Sharon Jester Turney became the CEO of Victoria's Secret Direct, heading up its catalog business. According to reports at the time, Turney wanted to remove the hooker looks in the catalog and make it more the aesthetic, more like Vogue than Playboy. She became the CEO of the whole brand in 2006. Under her nine-year tenure, the company thrived. Sales increased by 70% to $7.7 billion. This was around the time that Victoria's Secret started its international expansion. The Victoria's Secret's international entry strategy would include three types, namely opening their direct stores, opening stores in duty-free location in airports, and three through franchises. However, Turney abruptly stepped down in 2016, which came as a shock to many people because Victoria's Secret posted a record quarter and had strong sales and stable financials. She was succeeded by Wexer as interim CEO. Wexer made a series of quick and fast changes, some which would have detrimental effects to the business. Killing the catalog, swimwear, and apparel to focus solely on lingerie, the core part of the business, which proved to be a costly mistake. He also split the brands into three, Victoria's Secret Lingerie, Victoria's Secret Beauty, and Pink. After the resignation of Turney, sales began to falter. Victoria's Secret was slow to adjust to a shift from padded and push-up bras towards bralettes and sports bras, missing out on a major fashion trend. It was ignoring the culture shift from done up doll to at leisure. More body positive underwear brands such as Airy, Third Love, and Lively cropped up, and more recently, Savage by Fenty, taking major market share. The lingerie industry was going through a massive cultural shift. Real thin models were being replaced with a variety of body types at lingerie companies, from Airy to Adormy, as self acceptance and natural beauty replaced the restrictive norms of the past. This new attitude from customers threatens everything that Victoria's Secret's marketing is known for, from the Photoshop ads of angels to the outrageously produced fashion shows to the over-sexualized ads. In the meantime, its competitor, Airy, started their unairbrushed Airy Real campaign, showing real women that they are beautiful without Photoshopping and regardless of their size. Its campaign with plus-size models highlighted this. These campaigns were resonating so strongly with women that the company's shares started exploding. Inversely, Victoria's Secret was facing a scandal with their perfect body campaign, featuring the same very thin, tall, and conventionally attractive models that they've been using. And during this cultural shift, this sparked widespread backlash online and inspired the hashtag I am perfect on Twitter. Between 2016 and 2018, its market share in the U.S. dropped from 33% to 24%. Shoppers started complaining that the quality of the product declined significantly, while prices remained sky high. Unfortunately, the brand found itself caught up in the Me Too movement. Its annual fashion show, featuring its famous angels, aired only a month after allegations of sexual harassment came out against Harvey Weinstein. The show saw its television ratings sink 30%. At a time when assaults were being shined on in various industries across Hollywood, the public did not take kindly to scantily clad models. Its annual fashion show, which was revolutionary when it first debuted, started drawing criticism for being outdated and viewership slipped. In 2018, the show had a total viewing audience of 3.2 million people, a stark comparison to its peak in 2001 when 12.4 million people watched. In 2018, in November, things went from bad to worse. Ed Razik, the marketing chief that was instrumental in building up the brand, sent the internet into a frenzy after he made controversial comments about transgender and plus size models. As you can imagine, those comments didn't go over well with the public. The backlash came swiftly and was harsh. And although Razik made a formal apology online, some of his critics called for him to step down. Inversely, Rihanna's Savage by Fenty Fashion Show attracted attention thanks to their inclusive stance on model casting and for delivering on comfort. 
Having a diverse cast of models, including a very pregnant Slick Woods, who actually went into labor immediately after the show at one of her shows, solidified the brand as an innovator and marketed itself as the antithesis to Victoria's Secret and helped to seal further market share from the brand. Ironically, only one year later, Victoria's Secret would hire their first transgender model, Valentina Sampaio. However, the controversy did not end there. In 2019, the company found itself being linked with a convicted sex offender, Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein managed Wexler's money for several years, and a former company executive told the Wall Street Journal that he tried to meddle in Victoria's Secret's business, offering input on which women should be models. Some of Epstein's victims came forward, saying that he used his connections with Wexler at Victoria's Secret to coerce them into sexual acts. And while Wexler tried to distance himself from Jeffrey Epstein by saying that at some point in your life, we're all betrayed by friends and he was taken advantage of, him and Razik were not free and off the hook. Ed Razik tried to kiss models, asked them to sit on his lap and touch one on the crotch ahead of the 2018 Victoria's Secret fashion show. Razik was instrumental in selecting the brand supermodels. He was the one that created the fashion show and he was the executive producer so he had the say in which models were going to walk and which weren't he often reminded models that their careers were in his hand there were reports that wexner was alerted to the gross abuse of power and the sexual assaults that were happening within the company and instead of putting his foot down and changing the culture the models were retaliated against in March of 2020, the, the coronavirus pandemic swapped across the U.S. and Victoria's Secret was forced to shut, shutter its stores. This had a very negative effect on an already struggling company. While, ma while the making of this video, some of the stores have been reopened. Most of them in some locations have been closed permanently. Although Victoria's Secret was a company that was revolutionary in its time, it has recently been plagued with sexual abuse scandals, a culture of misogyny, bullying and harassment, and a refusal of its management to keep up with the change in culture and consumer taste. Can they turn the company around? Only time will tell.